you have a second, you may not want to miss the next five minutes. But um, first of all, quick thank yous. Um, Scott, uh, small thanks, and Father uh, Glenn for all of this, and the Knights of Columbus, is that right, that helped set this up? So thank you for that. And uh, Potluck Cafe did this, and all this food is going to be used, but when it leaves here and given away to another charity, and of course, thanks to the volunteers. Now, a couple of things, two things. One, there are some things that are gonna be done on Judy's behalf in this city. Uh, the city's gonna do a real blowout on the 29th, thanking her. SFU is a, a Judy Graves Graduate Scholarship. Is that Charlotte, where are you? Right there. You talk to her, they're raising money. There'll be a scholarship in her honor. She has the information. If you have a bunch of it, you may wanna let people grab it as they walk out. Um, Rod Turnbull's here, Street to Home Foundation. Uh, Rod, they're going to do a bricks and mortar fund honoring Judy. Judy didn't want money, she wanted a fund to help. Here's a surprise get more people off the street. <laughs> now, we have two things to do we have to read a letter, and we have to talk about a gift. Uh, we're not constrained how the city is constrained. We, we can do th things out of the box, but first, the letter. I've asked Ron Reed to read it, and I need a copy of it up here. And then, um, and, okay, you do it there, and I'll hold it. Thank you. Judy. This is a plaque we're going to give her today. That's, these are the words she's reading. Forty years ago, you began work at the city of Vancouver. Nothing's been the same since, for the city or for you. At first it was not what you said, but what you did. You loved and you listened to the most vulnerable of the city. You fearlessly befriended those we could not see and issued a clarion call on behalf of those we could not hear. The homeless did not become your project, Judy. You became theirs. They were teachers, not textbooks. The world called them outcasts, you called them friends. You learned their names. Then you built bridges between their individual situations and our personal indifference, political inaction, skepticism. You, you came not as a professor, a power broker, or a social activist, but quietly, without judgment. You implored all levels of society to listen to your friends' stories. You inspired us to summon our better angels to assist those who were trapped and hurting. The governments of the city and province have responded. The business community became engaged. Philanthropists gave generously. Diverse church communities worked together. Other cities in British Columbia and Canada have begun following models you helped initiate for respecting and helping the homeless. Thousands of the homeless have found homes. We still have work to do. But you've helped us set, you've helped set us inexorably on the right path. We know that your faith in God was the source of your convictions, your behavior, and your power. As you recently wrote, I'm embarrassed at the amount of thanks people in the street are giving to me, just walking up to me and thanking me. I don't deserve it. God in Christ deserves all the thanks. We thank God for lending you to us. In the parable of the talents, Jesus made clear that risking all was better than fearful prudence when it came to the kingdom of heaven. We can think of no one who more deserves. Well done, good and faithful servant. With gratitude, love, and respect, your fellow pilgrims. So don't, don't, move, don't move, Judy. Uh, this you will like the least of all that we've done. Uh, we have a gift for you. Now, why a gift? Well, to express our gratitude for you and your life. Your family loves you. God loves you. Your grandchildren love you. Um, who's the gift from? 
It's good to know these things. It's from uh, fellow pilgrims, Protestants, Catholics, the secular, the sacred, the rich and the poor, some lay folks, some clergy, men and women, nonprofits and churches. In other words, from every sector of society. From every sector of society. Used for? Well, it's going to be used for transportation and uh, lodging and airfare and meals and coffee and spending money and gifts for family and personal shopping with a whole lot extra. And where are you going? Well, your daughter, Pieta, picked it. You're going for three weeks to Chartres and Paris, France, from all of us. So um, the greater community responded far more than you can imagine, so it's all done, it's all raised, it's all given. Uh, there are books and magazines in here on where you're headed. Uh, there's a travel package in here and a really nicely written itinerary. And there's a check in here. And uh, we just thought you should have that from fellow pilgrims. And thank you. And enjoy. <laughs> So, so th since we're in his, stay sanded, since we're in his hood, we asked the Archbishop to bring the final words and the, uh, and the benediction. In fact, sit down, you'll be more comfortable. And uh, you can stay here with the Archbishop. Oh, you want to say something? Stay, stay, go to <laughs> Thank you, this is the most unexpected thing I could imagine. Um, I have always dreamed about being able to walk the labyrinth and um, I've never been off this continent, and uh, I'm going to have to get a passport. <laughs> wow. I think Judy has the right passport. She's got the one that's going uh, all the way up, so <laughs> I'm not going to worry, wor worry about immigration services. Uh, so many wonderful things have been said about Judy, the comparisons almost inevitable, I'm sure, uh, that made her uneasy. The Mother Teresa stuff, we could add Dorothy Day, Francis of Assisi, there's a whole list of people. But what came through certainly to me, not today so powerfully, was that uh, we're on this journey together and that we can't sort of project just desires and say, well, Judy has done them for us. Her invitation was that we can, in fact, and this takes real humility, we can do even better. And Judy gave us the clue, how do we, how do, we do that? Uh, we don't see ourselves as the one who are the operators. We're instruments, and God willing, humble instruments. There is one person, though, one biblical person that Judy also reminds me of. It's not a gal, it's a guy, it was John the Baptist, who was sometimes furious, sometimes blazing. Um, but as you mentioned, this is something that um, the heat of God that we sometimes feel, that desire for righteousness, is not something that we let rest with ourselves, that we return it uh, to the Lord and go on from there. Um, prophet sees the writing on the wall. Prophets, controversial, outspoken, and willing to go to the end. And that's what um, I think one of the, the lessons, if people can give one another lessons in life, and we do, that is indeed something that we can learn from Judy. And particularly, I think important, is the ability to see in every person um, that transcendent dimension that every person, rich, poor, whatever the, 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 the circumstance, is always an image of a loving God. 
and that if we forget that, then we've turned sort of some people into machines and others into uh, imagine that they're human beings and we're all needy. We all live in poverty of some kind or another. That's why we need one another and that's why we in fact need the Lord. I want to thank Judy particularly because for her specific contributions to helping so many of us in the Catholic Church, particularly through our Catholic charities and our outreach, um, helping us to understand what we do, not just to do more or do better, but to understand why we do it. And she served on our advisory board for Catholic Charities. She's mentored uh, Scott Small before him, Mary McDougall, and so on. And Judy, you got the gospel right, <laughs> that it's simple. It's not about us. It's about the Lord and his people. And when you see, when you go to Chart, you'll walk the labyrinth <coughs> and you'll see the most beautiful stained glass window of Mary uh, that, uh, who, you know, the selection of her Magnificat that you wanted read, how indeed through her he has raised up uh, the lowly. And also in Paris and another of the Gothic cathedrals you'll visit are the wonderful uh, statues of the smiling Madonna, where the Gothic figure of, the, of Mary holding the child Jesus, and she has this wonderful, enigmatic, um, joyful, slightly ironic smile. And uh, I hope that you're able to identify her. So thank you for the wonderful things that you've done, which have been praised. Thank you for being, for being you. And um, being with us as a for fellow pilgrims, and you have reminded us of that. God bless. May we just bow our heads for a moment and pray. Compassionate God, days pass and years vanish, and we walk often sightless among your miracles in our midst. Lord, fill our eyes with seeing and our minds with knowing and our hearts with loving. Let there be moments when your presence in others, like lightning, illumines the darkness in which we so often walk. Help us to see, wherever we look, the beauty of your face, and enable us to serve you in the least of our brothers and sisters. No matter the street or the corner, the park bench or the shelter, grant us the grace to exclaim, how filled with awe is this place. Now, Lord, we ask you to make us instruments of your peace and heralds of your hope, ministers of your love to those whom you place on the paths of our lives. And as your daughter, your servant, Judy, moves into a new chapter of her life, keep her under the shelter of your arm and guide her feet into the way of peace. We make this prayer in your holy name. Amen. Do you want to say something? Or? Yeah. Go ahead. This is, uh, we want to, uh, uh, we know that we've gone a little bit over time, but I think uh, most of us, I think, would say that it's been worth that. We also want to know, we know that some of you want to, uh, or need to get to other places, and so uh, this would be an opportunity to leave. We're going to have about a two, three minute break, and some of you are aware that we were going to have a Q&A with Judy. And if you want to be part of that, uh, we encourage you to come forward a little bit and, uh, and to stay. But I know, and what Tom was going to say, I think, uh, but I, from my position as an associate and a chaplain and spiritual, spiritual advisor for the Portland Hotel Society, I want to say thanks for coming and uh, for being a part of this great morning. So, so in about...